Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Thursday, January 14th, 2016. So it's Thursday. The week is winding down. Tomorrow is the midway point in the month. That's kind of freaky, but I've talked about that. I'm still just kind of sitting here aghast. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, you better stop, moron. Guy was just almost turned right out in front of me. Roads aren't... Roads are actually pretty good. We had about another inch and a half um, since I cleared... Or this morning, I'll say. By this morning, we had an inch after these scraping. So that's probably stuff that fell yesterday and overnight. So the roads aren't too bad. There's, you know, they're, they're a little wet and stuck looking in places here. But you, know, you don't want to be panic breaking because some idiot can't be bothered to look left when he's turning right. So he's only got one freaking direction to learn. And somehow he missed me in all my lighted up glory here with my headlights on. What an utter fracking moron. God, people. Anyway, that wasn't what I was going to talk about. What the frack was I talking about before almost collision happened? I don't know. <laughs> it's gone. I know what my main topic is going to be, so I'll just launch into that, shall I? Uh, I was looking at the Twitters at my Twitter app, at the highlights area, which is where you can see what's new and trending and hot and newsy and whatnot, and I saw this headline there that said, police officer accidentally shoots child while serving eviction notice. And, you know, the thoughts that go through come to mind when I read that are like, you know, so what, we got Barney Fife there, and he's going to serve an eviction notice, and he's all nervous, and he gets his gun out, and the gun's shaking, and, and, and you know, accidentally goes off just because he, he's scared to do something that's an unpleasant task that people probably won't like. All right, there's idiot number two. Yeah, okay. Fortunately, he's not really in my way. He's just an idiot on the side of the road, waiting to back up in traffic. So, I digress. <laughs> you know, I know that's not a valid picture. I know that's not a valid picture. But but that's the picture that the headline leads me to. I, I would suppose that if I was somebody who was upset at police violence, I would be throwing my hands up and saying, look... It's happening again. Police officers are just wantonly killing kids now. Which I kind of feel like is 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 more the point of the of the headline, but save that thought. I will get back to that later. And so you can read like what tweets are kind of behind the headline. And so I can see he was serving an eviction notice and the officer greeted was greeted by the father. Um, with a gun. So I'm like, uh, okay. And and I'm sitting here thinking about what I'm going to talk about. And I was kind of playing out the scenario in my head based on my vast experience in police procedure, which mainly comes from Hill Street Blues (laughs) and other cop shows I've seen over the course of my life. And I thought, you know, I don't... I'm making stuff up now. I, I I don't know how this went down. So I actually did a quick search and I found a Washington Post article whose headline by the way was nearly identical the headline there was first it had this little quote I hope she didn't suffer in quotes and then you know police officer accidentally kills child while serving eviction notice or I think it was less wordy than that but that was the, the gist of the headline so I read the story, and the girl had was homesick from school that day. So the police officer, 
you know, one of the things I, I was I was wondering about in my mental story was, you know, did the police officer identify himself? Is it maybe a rough neighborhood? And so the guys in the in the practice of answering the door with the gun, um, I, I thought that was fairly unlikely, but whatever. But what the story said, the, the understanding as of you know half an hour ago, is that the police officer knocked on the door, the door was open, the father answered the door, saw it was a police officer, shut the door, got the gun, came back, opened the door, was raising the gun toward the officer in preparation for shooting, or what would seem like he's preparing to shoot. And the officer, to protect himself, pulled his gun and shot the man. He shot him in the arm. And then he took cover and asked for backup. Now what the bullet did, so he only fired one shot. Now what the bullet did is the bullet hit the man in the arm, it passed through the arm, and hit the girl, who happened to be standing behind her father, and she died. Which is tragic. You know, but it's not the officer's fault. I mean, unless something new comes to light. But at this point, you know, the, the information that the Washington Post has is that the officer was trying to protect himself and the bullet passed through and accidentally hit the kid. You know, and, you know, stuff happens. But what, I, I, what, what really gets me going about stories like this or really the headlines for stories like this, is, you know, if you doubt media bias, here's your case study. You know, why is that the headline for this? To make national news, this happened in Pennsylvania, in some little town in Pennsylvania. This did not happen, you know, in New York City uh, or some big metropolis. This was not a famous child. And yet it's national news. And why is it national news? Because police killings have a lot of attention on them right now. And so, you know, the media is offering, well, here's one more. I mean, there's even a a little bit in the article where they say, this is the 22nd uh, police killing of the year. And, and, and so the bias on this, in, in my mind, is, is fairly self-evident. They're really trying to highlight the fact that the police are killing people. And then the people that are angry about police killings are going to get angrier. So if you don't think that, you know, so, so it's obvious. I don't want to make this confrontation. So it, it's very obvious to me that, you know, here we got the media. And I'm talking about the media as a whole. Not necessarily the Washington Post, although, you know, it's their headline too. You know, the media are not above stirring the pot of poking the bear. And to me, this is poking the bear. You're taking, you're taking what is probably like, uh, I don't know if this is like a suburb of of Philadelphia. I mean, I I was shaving while I'm looking at this, so I, I wasn't like spending tons of time researching it. So I don't know if it's like out in the middle of nowhere of, of, of Pennsylvania or if it's like a suburb of Philly or Pittsburgh or what have you. But, you know, why is this national news? It's national news because we have a cop killing a kid. And it's national news because of Ferguson and everything that came after Ferguson last year. And so let's add another let's add another piece of wood to that fire, right? Because the reality is, you know, the the famous old line for the media is if it leads if it bleeds it leads. You know, and that's very true. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that works in the media thinks like that, but as an organization, that is the truth. That is good news. That gets some ratings, that gets some subscribers. 
we run to those outlets when something bad happens. So therefore, you know, it's 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 kind of the Pavlovian response. If we really only pay attention to the news when something bad happens, then what are they going to do? They're going to try to present us with something bad all the time because they need us to come back. So no, they're not above stirring the pot because they're thinking about, oh, we need hits on the websites, otherwise otherwise our subscribers aren't going to be, our uh, sponsors aren't going to be happy. We need people to watch the news because otherwise, you know, our sponsors aren't going to be happy. But to me, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of irresponsible in this case. You know, I don't think it should be national news. And if it does, you know, why couldn't they say something like, you know, officer protecting himself accidentally shoots a child? You know, that might be a better headline. It's very factual. It still gets the point that an off point across that an officer has, you know, killed a child, and that it's an accident. But we don't make him sound like that. Here he had one job, one stinking simple little job: deliver a piece of frack and paper that said you got 30 days to move out. One job. That's all he had to do. And he goes in there, guns blazing, Barney Five, mother effing, you know. And I think that's the knee jerk that a lot of people are going to have one way or the other. Either you're going to think, well, you know, there's a guy who should be a postman or something. Or they're going to be like, you know, he's out to kill the little people. So, yeah. Not very impressed with the media on this one. At all. But I think I will, um, I will let that be that for today I will be back tomorrow and I'll be talking to you then so be seeing you